Hi guys, Mark Bumgarner, Angela Bumgarner. Uh, we're uh, part of the VW Club of Oklahoma, and we're the proprietors of Bumgarner's VW Cranking House. And this is along. my 1965 Volkswagen bus, Little Miss Sunshine. She's my favorite one. I love to drive her. And we live on five acres here in Tuttle, Oklahoma. Well, the property, uh, we, we basically moved out here um, because we wanted to get into outside of the city, Oklahoma City cool school systems, if we decided to go ahead and have children and stuff, and we did, and we raised our kids out here. We've got a beautiful area out here. We've got neighbors that are close, but not real close. So All the way to that fence and all, all the way, the way to, to the farthest fence. house so down there. Five acres. So. The house has changed a lot over 32 years. Most, mostly what's changed is the add-on of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we were trying to count how many Volkswagens we had the other day, and we're not even sure, to be honest with you. I think, I think we're at 20. about 20. We've got a few out here that don't belong to us that are here that, that I'm doing work on. I have a I have a business that I have had. I have been self-employed for the last 20 years, and the company's called Pressure Solutions. And we do a lot of high pressure gas and compressor type work and stuff, which it kind of feeds the fetish or the, the sickness of collecting all these Volkswagens. But yeah. I've also started a business on the side. This is my garden speed every cranking house. And I build engines and do uh, restoration work and mechanical restorations and all that kind of stuff. I got a full machine shop here at the house. I'm kind of like when I started collecting all these Volkswagens up, I knew that I'd either have to be extremely rich or I had to have some tools to work on this stuff myself. And I started with uh, the vintage Volkswagens back in 78, 79. I've been involved with, with the air cool Volkswagen since the late 70s. I built my first Sand Sprite 2 off-road sand car uh, in 79. Uh, it was a show winning car. I took it to car shows back then, back in the early 80s. Uh, I still have the car. It's still alive and well. It's went through some revisions, of course, but it's still a short travel car with a swing axle and hot rod 1835 engine. And, you know, it's it's spent a lot of hours out in the sand. Of course, in the garage, you know, we got all these new cars sitting outside. And as you see, what we've got here in the garage is got my baby here, my 57 oval rag top. She's got dust on her right and now. And she's got dust on her because she hadn't been out in, the, in a little bit. She still runs and drives. We just haven't had her out. Still has her original 36 horse engine. Uh, most of the interior is original on this car. The only thing I've done to it is I've lowered it and put an aero beam on it. I'm still running a six volt system on it. It has a dealership installed factory Philco tube AM radio in it. Uh, and it's just, a, it's just a neat little car. And it has a wonderful story too. The guy I purchased it from, him and his son had bought it to do kind of a restoration on it and his son got killed. And he really didn't feel like he could keep the car anymore. And I got lucky enough to become the next owner and the caretaker of the car. And it's it's kind of neat. And we've also got the other 67, 67 Trug. We call it the Trug. All steel, <laughs> no fiberglass. Uh, and, and it came to us with a really neat story too. The lady that owned the car, her dad built this car, lived in California. And he showed it at the Buggins in California in the 90s, I think the early 90s, and it won awards. Well, he bought this bug brand new and then did the conversion on it. And I was told that this is a Datsun pickup cab, the back of the Datsun pickup cab. And these parts are also Datsun pickup bed parts. The unique thing about this one is, is he kept everything as close to original as he could in the way of the beetle, the bug part of it. The fenders, which is really unique, you look down the fenders and these front and rear fenders are perfectly lined up. They're not wider or narrower, but they're actually streamlined. And he did all the, he did all the metal work on this car. He was a machinist. And it has a type three square back engine in it, which allows it to have a flat bed. And of course we've got the bed full of stuff, but it's got a type three engine in it. So it has a complete full pickup bed. This one's crazy. This one's kind of my baby here. <laughs> Angela, Angela's kind of, it's mixed because we had a couple, a, a young couple come up. It's a, it's a 2003 TDI diesel, turbo diesel. Uh, young couple come up, asked us if we might, possibly might want to buy it. And we didn't know what it was. And she was talking to Angela about it more so than me. And she says, well, it's a 2003. And I thought, oh, it's a new Beetle. We probably don't want it. 
And then she mentioned it was a TDI diesel and I said, we've got to have it. So we bought it and we ended up giving $300 for the car. And it was actually running when we bought it, but it needed a bracket on the engine, which is a very detailed repair where half the car has to come apart to put this bracket on it. And her husband had taken the car, bought it about a year ago and put a new timing belt on it and stuff. And he just didn't want to mess with it more. So we bought it and I have been working through the little bugs and issues on it. We've got it running good. Uh, my intent with this car is I'm going to put a three and a half inch lift kit on it and make it a new Beetle Baja. So I've got an old Beetle Baja, I need to have a new one. So, and then over here, this is a pretty neat little, pretty neat vehicle. My dad bought this Suburban in 1978 from Allen Merle Chevrolet in Yukon, Oklahoma. And I was 13, 12 years old and I was there when he signed the paperwork and made the deal. And it's one of the few things I have left of my dad's other than a few hand tools that I still have to have a memory of my dad. So, and it's, it's a neat rig. I think it's got 109 or 10,000 miles is all it's got on it. And it's a 1978 model. Mm -hmm. So, and it's got stuff that needs to be done to it. And I've got it full of parts. I just got to get to time to get it done. <laughs> so moving over here to the, the 59 SO23 sub hatch. Uh, it has, for the most part, all of its original cabinets in it. This bus came to us. I had a friend of mine that was in the local Mustang club. He told me he had three buses he wanted to sell. And he said, one of them's a camper bus. And I thought, ah, it's probably a Bay. You know, that's that's my first thought, it's a Bay Westie. So we get out there, he tells me, he's got them stored at like a storage facility and they're outdoors and he's got tarps on them. And we go over there to look at them. And he said, all I want is $3,000 for them. My mom doesn't want them anymore, I just want rid of them. So I said, okay. So we get out there and we pull the cover off this one first. And I'm like, well, that's kind of strange, you know, cause I hadn't really paid much attention to the early buses especially the, the Westy camper buses, I just didn't. And when I realized what it was, I just went, oh my gosh, you know? And I've had some of my Volkswagen buddies come over and they're like, throw an engine in it, Mark, and just drive it like as is. People will think it's crazy cool. And it's the, it's the odd, it's the kind of rare paint combination, the dove gray and what is that? Um, it mango, dove gray and mango, mango green. So it's kind of a rare combination. It still has its split transaxle under it. I've got a couple of 36 horse engines that when I get the opportunity to get them fixed and get them built, I'm probably gonna put, put it in there at least where I can start driving it. But Angela wants to do a full resto on it. She doesn't want a halfway restore it. She wants it nice. So another project we have, this is another vehicle that I've got here. It's a customer's vehicle, uh, 69 um, square back. So I do a little bit of work for other people as well, our too. Our Aaron's bus. Yep. Well, this pickup truck's kind of unique. Uh, in a sense that it's a single cab and it's a bay and it's the first year 68 model. Um, we, we acquired this truck. I had, uh, it's funny, I had, uh, I had bid on this truck on eBay. <laughs> it was on eBay and Angela didn't know I was bidding on it. <laughs> and my brother Kenny, and my brother Tony were here visiting and Kenny grabbed up my iPad and said, hey Mark, I think you just won this. And Angela looked at me and said, I didn't know you were bidding on that. And I said, yeah, I was bidding on it. So long story short, we brought it, we went to Skokie, Illinois and picked it up. And um, it, it, we knew once we got there, we could see it had a lot of rust and there was a lot of rust on it and some things going on with it. It ran. And uh, it's it, and it's still like I said. Once we got it back here, I've kind of thought about trying to do more than just get it mechanically sound. But then I thought, you know what? I got an idea. Angela's grandfather, Jack Stevens, name on the door, um, owned a DX station in the late '60s, early '70s in Enid, Oklahoma. And we had some stuff after her grandmother passed away that we, we had obtained from, from the estate that had stuff on it like his, from his DX station. And we had some of his service invoices and stuff and it had all the information on it. And I said, you know what I want to do with that truck? Jack would have never probably had a Volkswagen. <laughs> I don't know, he might have. But we wanted to kind of have a memorial or, or a tribute to her, her grandpa. So we painted this truck up to look like it was his DX service truck 
and age the lettering and stuff. And this phone number, AD2961, anybody that's old enough to remember, they used to have, that was how your phone number started, was, was the letters. So, Especially in a small town. And in a small town, you only had to dial six of the numbers out of the out of the, the balance of the, the, eight, the eight numbers. So, this or is nine, how his numbers. logo looked on his bills of sale and his invoices. It looked, you know, Steven Super DX Service. And that is his actual phone number. So, and it also had all of this on his invoices, the electric, brakes, magneto, and tune-up tune service work. And On the back of the truck, it says Enid, Oklahoma. My mother cried when she saw it because she had, she's an only child. And my grandfather died when I was seven years old. And so it, it meant a lot to her to have a tribute to my and it, it runs and drives. I went through it com completely. It's 100% had a mechanical restoration on it. The body's, of course, not restored on it, but that's the it's got unique. got license plates riveted yeah, all there, over Yeah, there are license plates throughout this truck that's holding the sheet metal together. Uh, from the Garden State of New Jersey, of course, is where the truck originally arrived from. I ran the serial number, and it came into the U New York City when it was shipped in. So. I'm trying to stay off that. And I, I, you know, that's the one thing about it. I kept it, and I wanted to leave it that way because there you go, Garden State, New Jersey. I left it that way because I thought it would be cool. And um, it, like I say, it runs and drives. We we really enjoyed having it. And it's funny, I've got a '63 single cab that's beautiful, and I can take this truck and sit it next to my '63 single cab. And guess which one gets the most looks? This one. <laughs> so over here, we've got a 68 Bay Westie. It's got a story too. Uh, the salvage yard I used to play in as a child in southeastern Oklahoma, a real good family friend of ours owned the salvage yard for, I don't know, 25, 30, 40 years. And they had a ton of old cars out there and stuff. And I like to tell this story and people don't believe it, but when I was a kid, you know, Volkswagens were, nobody cared about Volkswagens when I was little. You know, when I was young and the salvage yards were full of them. And the guys, they dragged those in at the salvage. And they loved them because they could shove them full of stuff when the crushers come to clear the salvage yard out for scrap steel. And they'd shove transaxles, transmits, whatever inside them to crush them and make them heavier. So, long story short. He had some 21 window buses out there on a row, and we'd go out there and shoot holes in them and do all kinds of stuff. And of course, I watched those buses get crushed and hauled off as of scrap steel. Well, this one, fast forward about, I don't know, 40 years later, my buddy calls me and he says, Dad's old salvage, which they don't own anymore, and he's not, he's since passed away. He said, He's got an old Volkswagen bus down there, and uh, I figured you might want to look at it. So, we go down there, and there it sits, and the guy says, well, it's been sitting here 15 years. And I said, okay, well, I want to make you a deal on it. So we made our deal, loaded it up, brought it home. And then the next day I'm out there, and Angela says, I bet you're going to have that thing run in about 10 minutes. And I said, yep. Went out there, drained the oil out of it, ran some fresh fuel to the carburetor, or pulled the carburetor off, went through the carburetor, cleaned it out, put it back together, and fired right up. <laughs> yeah, after sitting 15 years. Wow, so. Man. But yeah, yeah, and of course we're the we're the we're the stewards and the and the and the uh, folks that that I'm the president of the VW Club of Oklahoma. Angela's on the board. Uh, we've got a wonderful group of people that that are involved with the VW Club of Oklahoma. All of our members, all of our board members. We just got through putting on our big show yesterday at uh, Mustang Wild Horse Park. Probably one of the largest attended one we've had so far. I think so. Uh, the, the, uh, over the period of ten years, so. Uh, I've been yeah. president. I've been the president of the club, voted in, been voted in every year as president of the club since 2017. About six years now. Yeah, about years. six years. So there you have that. And then we'll move on back. Let's go back this direction. Mm -hmm. And we can kind of talk about, talk about one of our other great finds. <laughs> it's a 1982. I've got it locked up. 1982 uh, Vanagon. Uh, yeah. Yep, Westy Vanagon, and uh, this came originally, and you know all, all your all your guys that are the big Vanagon guys, you know that it was water cooled because of the grill. Well, this one wasn't a gasoline engine water cooled in 1982. It was a diesel, 
and everybody hated the diesels because they didn't have any power. So we happened upon this Vanagon. It spent up nearly all of its life over here west of us in Tuttle, Oklahoma, in town. Guy owned it, passed away. His sister then acquired it after, you know, all the estate was, was done and said, well, he had taken this taken this Vanagon up to Colorado and they'd put a 2.1 liter water-cooled engine in it in the place of the diesel. So it's got the 2.1 water-cooled engine and it's an automatic. So automatic transmission. When we bought it, when we purchased it, it was, uh, transmission was out on it. So I knew we'd have to, you know, I was probably going to have to school up and become an automatic transmission guy. Cause that's one thing I never did do is really build automatics. I've done lots of transaxle work, standard transmission work. So we did that and got it done. And, and I got to have a shout out to my buddy, Harold Carter in California that builds those automatics for these things. He helped me tremendously with it as well. And, uh, we, we, we got a, you know, we, we became Vanagon owners <laughs> and that hadn't been too long ago. I think we've had the Vanagon for what maybe uh, and the refrigerator works on all three modes, uh, 12 volts, electric, and propane. So it all works. When we, dot, we bought it, we did have to go ahead and put a tent. We, we replaced the tent. Uh, but that's solar panels on the roof, so it'll go completely off grid. It'll it's got an inverter. We got AGM batteries in it. And uh, we, uh, we've actually camped in it a couple of times. Old yes. Oak Show's gonna be allowed to camp for the first time ever in its 10 year history. We finally got the approval. Uh, too late to do it this year, but we'll be doing it next year. We get to camp at the Old Vogue Show. So we're excited about that. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna have a blast. Kind of walk through here. This is kind of the field of uh, broken toys. Field of out broken here, dreams. I guess you could say. Um, we've got a lot of really unique. This this bug was, was used in a movie. Um, not exactly even sure what year it is or anything, but this bug was used in a movie that a guy shot here this last, uh, middle of this last year. And we were called and asked if we just wanted it. And I said, sure, we would probably take it. And it's, it's certainly not something I'm planning on restoring or anything. We just kind of wanted to give it a home. And I've done um, two, I guess display cars for Hideaway Pizza, which is a, a pizza chain here in Oklahoma and Arkansas. And they're very heavily involved in Volkswagens because that's what they used to deliver their pizzas in. And I think it's been, yeah, three years ago, I think they came to us and asked me to build them a, a static display car. So we built them a static display car. Bumgarten's Crank House built a static display car. We hauled it to Benton. Arkansas, they put it on display. It's still currently on display outside at their store. And then we built another car for them. And the next year they opened a new store and they wanted a static display car with a twist. They only wanted this much of the car. <laughs> and so we built them one like that and they hung it on the wall. Well, fast forward to this year, they want another one of those. And fortunately this one's gonna get another life and it's gonna become the Hideaway Pizza static display car and we're gonna we're gonna cut cut a sliver of this car off and make a display car out of it so this one was in an independent filmmaker Clayton yes. Trammell uh, made a film called bug man and it's fashioned after uh, there is a bug in Lexington Oklahoma that has legs steel legs and it's suspended in the air and it looks exactly like this and so Clayton made this car to mimic the, Le the Lexington spider bug and the film was about a man who was down on his luck and moved into the spider bug as his home. And so this was the this was the film prop and then he just gave it to us. And so it is the replica spider bug. <laughs> yeah. And now it'll get a new life. Well, let's walk down here right quick. If you want to, Ange, tell him about these two cars and I'm gonna go unlock the trailer. Okay. Someone just gave us this this car, so it's just here. <laughs> And this one we affectionately call Frank and Gia. Frank and Gia is chopped Volkswagen car Gia that they put some Porsche headlight buckets in and it's got some suicide doors with it. It's growing a tree in the middle of it, bless its heart. And uh, yeah, it needs some new life, but these, this really nice couple that, are, that we've become friends with now, 
uh, were moving and they needed it gone and they had us come get it and haul it away. So we call it Franken Gia because it's kind of a Frankenstein car. Uh, yes, all the way down to the fence line over there. When we had the engine building class here at our house, that was a big parking lot for 80 people that showed up here. That's and, a sand rail, sand rail frame. Uh, out here's some of the oh sad parts. There's a, there's a sand rail frame over there. There's some bumpers and kind of the the field of broken dreams. <laughs> but back here, there's some more interesting things. There's the there's the drag car. Well, and and Shin's going to probably appreciate this and probably kind of. This is the drag car that I acquired. We had a 63. I was telling you a story about the 50, 59 model uh, SO23. I obtained three buses in that in that price, that buy. And I had a 63, the 59, and a 68 Deluxe. They went a bus. It was absolutely a nice bus. And I think the guy had said his dad was driving it when he parked it. But this car is uh, eventually going to be the crank in the house's drag car. So, <laughs> But it's... Uh, Kind of seeing there, it's it's a really neat, unique car. It's going to be like I say, it's it's all race car. There's no very little bit of, about it left. It's actually still a beetle other than maybe the shell. And I do have an engine indoors that that we're going to plan to put in it, and we've got some other stuff to to do to it. But long story short, with the '63, when the '63, I sold the '68 Bay, and it went to France. And uh, I can't think of his name. We're still good, really good friends. And he calls me, take, doesn't call me, but he contacts me through Facebook occasionally and wants me to find him more cars to send to France. So we do that some. But uh, what ended up happening is I had the 63, and we affectionately called that bus the Cat P bus because the cats were living in this old 63 bus. And it was a hippie bus deluxe. It had red shag carpet throughout it. It was just, it was, it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a guy that owned this drag car in Texas. He says, I'll trade you for that bus. And I said, you got it. So we, we swapped. And of course, the only bus I ended up keeping was the 59 SO23. So there you have it. I kind of traded around and got a drag car out of the deal. And so we'll see where that goes. I'm hoping to eventually get that on the track and, and actually race it. Well, your so. brother, your brother, Kenny Southwick, is going to sponsor the Slicks by Southwick. Yeah. <laughs> and we've got, you know, get it racing Slicks on it. We Shin Shin certainly knows uh, and remembers Weber. And Weber was our French Frenchy bulldog. bulldog that that we had up until twenty about twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen, he fell in the pool and drowned. And uh, old Weber's right here. This was one of his favorite places when he'd come out of the shop. He'd come outside here, and this is where he always liked to use to take care of his business. <laughs> like pee on the poles out here. He'd come out here, and this is where he went to the bathroom. And I really thought, you know. A good friend of ours made the little ceramic beetle to put out here. And I don't even know where that little puppy dog came from. I don't it just know where showed it came up from. out here. I don't know where it came so from I felt either, like it was meant to be. It just this is This is where Weber's at. This is where he's, he's never left the shop. Mm -hmm. So he loved being out here in the shop. And yeah. you know, we miss him. We miss that dog. He he was one of those kind of dogs that it didn't matter if you wanted to pay attention to him, you were going to pay attention to him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lots more spare parts. Got a pallet full of parts here. Here's the Sardini. Um, and of course, it's even on race stands that they take to the track. I got all that stuff with the car when I bought it. This is the original body for the car, fiberglass body. Um, everything's here per se, for an exception to the rear suspension. I do have a, I do have a, a, uh, I do have a, uh, uh, a spec engine, a Formula V spec motor that's specifically built for Formula V. I do have that too. It came with it. And there's the old numbers and the FV on the car, and the history's just kind of crazy cool about how it came to pass. So this actually here's here is uh, you can't hardly see it, but it's still on the car. This is uh, you can't see it. It's Sardini Racing Works Inc. That's all hand painted on there. So and one of these days I'm gonna get this thing on the on the track maybe. <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> I think it's one of six ever made. Yeah, six, eight, something like that. And I don't even know. I think there's only maybe 
Maybe three still in round that's even in existence. I know of one that's up north. I've seen videos of it running slalom courses, but that's it. So, but as with any kind of race car, you put them together, take them apart, put them together, take them apart, put them together, and then you might get to go take the racetrack. So, so true. I've even got a couple of old DX Super Boron uh, gas pumps, gas dispensers that eventually one of these days. My, my, kind of one of my cool things I've always wanted to be able to do is when they used to build these gas stations back in the 60s, 50s and 60s, they bring these gas stations out on a truck and they'd just be panels. And they'd screw all the panels together and poof, they'd have a gas station. And I've always said that if I could ever find one of those old gas stations, I'd recreate it out here and have my own DX gas station outside, but hadn't happened yet. <laughs> you got a couple of those. Yep. And we got this. We're not allowed to say who gave it to us. We but... had a really good German friend of us put the sign on loan to us forever. <laughs> <laughs> and it's lighted. I do have lights in it. We can oh, turn them. Yeah, we can turn the lights on at night. Uh, I want to say it's a nine footer. So I ended up only getting half the sign. But half's better than nothing at all. <laughs> all right, cool. Those stickers. Yeah, we can't get rid of them. And then, of course, we're inside into the in more into more of the madness. <laughs> wow. The gift that keeps on giving. We've got Angela's '61 up there. We acquired this car from a, a a pretty good pretty good friend of ours that we've known for quite a while, number of years. His dad bought the car for his wife or his, for his mom, and uh, she didn't like it because it didn't have air conditioning or standard transmission, and it's 1961 model. Well, he called us here two years ago, maybe about two years ago, and said he was wanting to sell the car. And he said, I thought I'd call you first because you might know somebody to be more interested in wanting it, blah, 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 and I said, yes. He said, but there's only one problem. It caught fire, and I went, oh, no. So he sent me pictures. And the whole back end of the car had caught fire. It had melted the carburetor into the intake. I mean, it burnt the back of the car up really bad. So he wanted to sell it. And his dad had just recently passed away, and he just he just didn't really have a use for it. So we, again, worked out another deal, and we ended up with the car. And once we bought the car, we took a look at it, and I said, you know, we need to do this incorrectly. We need to go ahead and completely repaint it, uh, do everything we can to put it back as, as correct as possible. Even down to the the radial bias fly Autobahn tires, thanks to Shin, Shin talked about them and put them on you guys' panel, on your panel bus, your cargo, yeah, in your car. And I said, oh my gosh, we gotta have some of those for this car because it's, it's only fitting that it has the right tires on it. So this car is gonna be pretty close to being what it was when it came out of the factory. So, and moving, moving forward, we've got our other 57 oval, <laughs> which is which is a Baja, and I get accosted every time we take it to a show. You cut an oval up to make a Baja, and I said, no. This car actually was built back in probably the late 70s, early 80s, as you can see. And it's kind of unique in a sense that it's got bus gear reduction boxes to have the lift on it. It's got the, is it the, I can't think of the, is it is it uh, James Johnson lay down bars on it to keep the wheel hop down off these gear reduction boxes? It's got that. All these period correct parts for the late seventies, early eighties. And then in my process of people coming to me wanting me to buy parts and stuff like that, I acquired this specific engine out of a group of parts that I bought from a friend of a friend. And this engine is a Gene Berg engine. <laughs> Yes, and it's got a Zenith carburetor, on it, so all, and it's even got a, a Porsche distributor in it. So this is all period correct, old school speed stuff for that period of time. And that engine, oh, it runs like a scalded dog. <laughs> but it's neat. And, it, and the, another unique thing about it, the tires that's on this car are Western Auto Sandblaster tires, which I think up north, Western Auto went out of business in like 2007, 2008. So, I haven't tried to look the date code up on these tires, but they're probably around that year. 
And every time I take it and drive it, I sweat because I don't know when these tires are just gonna pop. But they're not dry rotted, so it might be okay. <laughs> Few engines here that, that in various processes of being built. This particular engine here was another one of those finds that I ended up with that I bought reasonably. And this is the engine that will reside in the drag car. Uh, it's, it's a stroker motor, autocraft cylinders, um, autocraft pistons, super flow heads, and, and you know, just the stuff that this engine had in it when I bought it, I knew I'd got a, I'd got a gold mine, but these are bug pack roller rocker arms, and you don't even, you don't even see those anymore. So, uh, Chevrolet, Chevrolet valve springs, all the crazy stuff to make it go fast. And of course, 48 IDA, Italian Weber's, Joe Hunt Mag. I mean, everything that's supposed to be drag racing, I think. And everybody that comes in and sees that engine, they're like, you got these engine stands. Why don't you have this running? And I'm like, if I get it running, I'm going to want to put it in something. And then I'm probably going to put it in the wrong thing. And then I'm going to tear up the wrong thing. <laughs> so it's going to go in the drag car eventually. And today so. in the cranking house, we got Kenny's beautiful bus. Yeah, Kenny's 68 Bay Wind bus. Uh, Kenny, Ken talk to him a little bit about it. Well, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> And when you got a brother that can work on everything, it's great. So, yeah, cool. Uh, it's it's awesome. It's 68, and um, it's done inside now, and uh, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, area where we do all the work. Um, of course, I, I'm one of these guys. You almost never can have enough tools. I think you can, but uh, I've always been. I worked. I started out mechanicing for a living when I was 16 years old. Um, of course, dabbled in the Volkswagens even back then. So I slowly started acquiring building my set of tools years and years and years ago. Um, and I've still got a lot of my tools that I started out with as a mechanic. I've even got some of my dad's tools that I got as he passed away. So I've collected a, a pretty large assortment of tools. I don't think really, you really can never have enough tools. And if, if I can get a tool that's gonna save me a half an hour doing a job, Oh, I'm all about it. I'll go spend the money to get the tools. So lots of tools, lots of snap-on stuff. I have two dedicated engine stands here that I can build the engines. And as you can see, I do have an exhaust hose on this engine. I can run these engines on the stands. I've got a stand uh, engine. St I've got a, a setup here that I can fire up. Put all, It's a poor partial bell housing with a starter. I can start air-cooled engine up. So now you're using the engine for somebody else? Absolutely, absolutely. We do the engines here. Uh, we built the raffle engines for the VW Club of Oklahoma, what, for five years now? Yeah. For five years. Maybe and, six. Huh? Maybe six. Maybe six. So, yeah, I've built, I don't know how many engines we've built. I've kind of lost track. I've got records of them. I could go through and count them, but I've built a ton of air-cooled engines. And I've fixed problems. Folks will bring me some problems they'll have, like Weber carburation issues. We've got some guys that, that, that work on them here, too, locally. and. And I've had some had some of my customers come in and say, well, you know, my car's just not right. And I want it to be right, and we'll get it in here, and I try to make them happy, so, and we do that. But other than that, I mean, tools and equipment and stuff, it takes all of it. I've got lifts here in the shop, and uh, it, most of my stuff, I try to get pretty good deals on them. The auctions are the way to go. Uh, this this Build-A-Bay, Snap-On Build-A-Bay uh, tool cabinet came from Greg Darnell Ford in Midwest City. Greg Darnell decided to get out of the Ford business because of some things that was going on with Ford Murder Company. And he just said, I'm done, I'm gonna sell out. And we bid on these cabinets. We bid on a twin post lift and some other items too, as well at the auction and ended up with them. So, and of course we got our banners up here, uh, hot VWs, MP, some old Oak show stuff. I've got a couple exhausts sitting up here hanging from the ceiling that are new old stock True Hoff exhausts. They've never been on a vehicle. I would say probably middle to late 70s vintage. Um, now we I acquired, need to put an elevator in so that he Yeah, can we've got a, we've got a little lift there to get. Basically, we put that in so Angela we could get Angela's Christmas stuff down off the loft. <laughs> And it helps too to be able to do some other stuff here too, but it works pretty good. Works In the last, good. Uh, since shen has been here, we acquired the vintage yes. soda machine. Oh, yeah. It's pretty cool. And you can't beat a 
32, 33 degree can of soda pop out of there. You just can't. That's the best way to drink them. So Talk about that. This cabinet's full of Volkswagen tools, or not tools, Volkswagen engine building components. Uh, I keep tons and tons and tons and tons of parts. We had a parts house in Oklahoma City called Kerr Automotive Imports. And some of these Bosch signs and this stuff in here, the Bosch German spark plug, all this stuff came from that parts house. Roy Kerr owned that business for, I don't know, forever, probably since the 40s. Angela's grandpa used to come up and buy parts from him. That's how long it's been in business. I bought parts from Roy himself and about 14, 15 years ago, he just shut the business down and stopped. And Roy was kind of a hoarder of sorts. If the parts house would go out of business, he'd just go buy them. He'd go buy their inventory. Well, after a period of time in a 30 or 40,000 square foot warehouse, warehouse and parts store, the stuff starts stacking up. And when we went in there, the last few times we went in there, when he was in business, there were game trails through the just to get to the counter. And it's, things were stacked so you couldn't see anything. So, he had who knows how much in the way of vintage Volkswagen air-cooled parts. Well, his son came around and I had another friend of mine that contacted me and said, uh, gosh, you know, I've got the chance to go down here and buy some stuff out of the old Kerr parts place. Do you know anything about it? And I said, oh yeah, I know about it. I said, sure, I'd love to come. So we got in there and his son's kind of liquidating some of the parts. And we get in there and, and you know, I tell him, I say, hey, we, we looked everything over and we hauled stuff out of there. And it's just, it was just almost like you got done doing it, you almost felt like you had to go take a tetanus shot because it was just so bad inside the building and it stunk like nasty cardboard and parts and parts and parts. There were so many parts in that building that had been left to go bad from moisture and all that that just the number and level of parts that were there would just completely blow you away. But there was lots of good parts too that were still in the area that hadn't gotten wet or hadn't gotten damp. But I acquired a lot of those parts through that. And we went through there and we just, you know, I kind of made a run at it. And I told, I told uh, Roy's son, I said, listen, I can get about six people together and we'd be willing to make you an offer on all the air cool parts in the building. And with that, with our offer, we would be willing to help you kind of organize and sort this other stuff out so you can get it sold. Well, no, he thought he had a better offer and so that's the way that went, and we bought quite a bit. I think we spent, I don't know, six, $7,000 on parts, but we got a lot of we parts. We got that cabinet and a lot yeah. of what's in it. All the stuff in it. I mean, we got a ton of stuff. I've got an entire drawer full of new old stock Volkswagen transaxle parts, German transaxle parts. And then he had one shelf in the warehouse, in the old part of the warehouse that was completely full of Hazlitt Volkswagen tools. And I armbarred as many tools as I could get <laughs> off those shelves. I got almost every fixture for transaxle work that you that has what made. I've got all that stuff. So anyway, kind of cool. Lots of neat stuff. You know, and, and that's just this kind of the opportunities happen. And I'll have somebody call me and say, oh, I got a bunch of old parts I want to sell. Well, I'll go run and look at them. Sometimes it's a good deal. Sometimes it's not such a good deal, but I don't pass them up. I still try to go look at them. If it's not something I'm interested in, I'm the first person to call five or six people. Hey, this guy's got stuff you might be interested. I couldn't work a deal with him, but maybe maybe it's something you'll be interested in. So I always try to pass that around because, you know, being a Volkswagen, all those Volkswagen folks kind of work together and we try to we try to help each other. So Got a piece of really cool diagnostic test equipment here that, that uh, I'm really proud of. Back in 92, 93, Snap-on came out with a counselor too. This is a digital oscilloscope uh, printer. Also has a four gas analyzer built into it. Um, once everybody went to full computer control on the cars, there wasn't as much of the need and use for these, these scopes. Uh, this one still works beautifully. You can go all the way up to, I think, 10 or 12 cylinders. It's got the provisions to be able to do the, the waveforms. It's got a lab scope. It's got so many features to it. Uh, the four gas analyzer is really pretty amazing what you can do with it because of the sensitivity of the way it works. But ended up getting this. 
Uh, I got trained out. I got factory trained from Snap-on on these back in 92. I worked for a, a fleet company, uh, a fleet utility uh, as a mechanic, and, and they bought one of these. So we all got trained from the factory Snap-on guys how to use this. So I actually bought two of these. The first one I had didn't have the four gas analyzer. So I ended up, this one came up and had the full gas analyzer and we went all the way to Nebraska to buy it. And I give 300 bucks for it when I bought it. So I was just so tickled to get this because I knew what kind of a tool this could be for, well, you take a, a dual carbureted Volkswagen engine, you stick this probe in the exhaust, you tweak those air correction screws, the air mixture screws, fuel air mixture screws on a Weber carburetor and you can see it happening on it. It will show you between CO2, your oxygen level, all those things show up on the screen when you're doing that in a numerical value. So you can really dial in a, a set of carbs with this, with this scope. And it's got a lot of other features too as well that's, that's utilized. It's neat, it's really neat. I was tickled to get it. So, all right. and we'll move over here to the other side. We've got a couple more engines here. Uh, Jeff Kritz brought me an engine uh, he's wanting me to restore this engine for him. Oh, yeah, he brought it to me, dropped it off. He said, he, we've been conversing, talking over the phone probably for the last six months. And and you guys, if you guys know who Jeff Kritz is, Jeff's been in the Volkswagen circles for a billion years. And I'm actually honored that he would be willing to ask me to build him an engine. So we're going to do that. Lots more of new old stock parts here. Uh, I've got quite a bit of 36 horse stuff too as well. Um, Another piece of equipment I got here I love. This is my vertical mill. Another another auction find that I purchased. Um, this thing, you got the right tooling and equipment, you can pretty much do anything you need to to an air cool Volkswagen engine the way a machine works. Uh, I've got a 14 inch uh, rotary table here. This is a big table. You don't normally see these other than really big industrial applications. I don't normally pull this off the bed for the simple fact it weighs almost 400 pounds. So I've got tooling enough to where I can do what I need to do to my air-cooled stuff without having to take the take the, the rotary table off, but I can also move the rotary table over to one side or the other and be able to use the bed as well. Fully automatic, got a DRO on it. Um, got I probably got, I think I give $1,900 for this mill when I bought it. <laughs> At an auction, machines is the first one to invest the time and effort to get one in. Buy the very best tooling that you can afford, down to the end mills and everything. Because if you get the good quality stuff, it works completely different than the cheaper stuff, and you don't have to buy it a second time. A uh, little bit of everything here. Uh, lots of it's. We had an engine build class, so we're kind of. I had stuff moved around, and I'm not gotten back everything back into complete place where it needs to be. My sand car sits up there, and it's kind of. Kind of been a stepchild lately, uh, but it's one of the first ones that started my Volkswagen, my Volkswagen, uh, my Volkswagen fetish. So started, you know, my it was my introduction to air-cooled Volkswagen engines. And I built that car back in '78, '79, uh, and it still runs and drives. I haven't had it off the lift in probably six months, but it still runs and drives. Keep the battery tender on it. 1835 single Weber. Almost five grand tied up in transaxle. Kind of crazy for a sand car, but. <laughs> and I love the old, I love old Rat Fink. I, I'm kind of a Rat Fink, I love Rat Fink stuff. So I had a real good friend of mine had this painted for me for the shop. It doesn't, it's not a trash can. It's just more of a display item that I have out here, but had a real good friend of mine uh, that uh, had this done for me too as well. And all my old Hot Wheels. I've got a lot of really cool stuff. These Hot Wheels over here in the corner are the Hot Wheels that I've had since I was a child. Wow. And so I've kept them. And some of these others I've acquired and picked up through the years. Uh, so some of the bigger cars, the I think these are 116 scale. But more recently, I've purchased these at some auctions and stuff. A few little things in there that only mean something to me for the most part. But all, all the well, same thing is very unique stuff that's in there. So... Lots of cool stuff. Um, my 63 single cab, again, it's got stuff in the bed. We went to Eureka Springs two years ago. I lost a clutch in it. Um, it's got a 1914 in it with a, a D-Gas Weber carburetor, hot rod engine, and I love to drive it spirited. I, I, I break the tires loose on it often. I like driving it. I love enjoying, you know, 
Well, of course, clutches only last so long when you drive them like that. So lucky enough, it failed on us before we were out in the middle of nowhere at Eureka Springs in the mountains. I think the parade there pretty well got the clutch. It wasn't me hot rodding it, but we've had this truck for a number of years too. And we really, we really enjoy it and love it. It's probably one of my more favorite vehicles too. Been lowered, you know, so, and now wow. <laughs> we're going, we're going into the, we're going into the cave here. So kind of the place, Shin's been here before. <laughs> Shin's been in here before, and we've we've sat for hours and hours uh, looking at popular mechanics books and from the 50s and 60s and 40s and all this kind of stuff. I here I think it was last year at Eureka. I bought an entire uh, January to December set of 1965 Hot Rod magazines, so I'd have the entire because 65 is the year I was born. So. And I love the I love the diecast cars. Unfortunately, the only problem is you can get too many of them. And when your wife goes to the Walmart coil aisle to look at the diecast cars and she buys them too, well, it's just a double trouble. So, but we do dress up as hippies for Halloween and put my bus out at the road. And instead of candy to a lot of the kids, we give Hot Wheels. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And the, the guy that came picked up the that came came today to get the raffle engine that won the raffle engine, his little boy, he's got a little 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 guy, probably what, seven, eight years old maybe. Yeah, six. I asked six. He said he was six. So I tell him, I said, Do you like Hot Wheels? And he says, Uh huh. And I just give him a handful of Hot Wheels. So. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. It's They're a lot everywhere. of stuff. It's a lot we of stuff. I tried to go through the wall recently and take off duplications and yeah and kind of tried to straighten them up a little there. bit i mean there's so many little things we've got some show banners from previous year's shows that i've always loved that bonneville speed week poster there is from 2002 and that's really a pretty cool thing i had a friend of mine that gave me gave me that uh, gave me that frame poster as well and over there in the corner i've got angela's grandpa's diploma from carter carburetor school and it's it's there, you know. And I've I've got all of his Carter carburetor tools, an entire set of Carter carburetor tools, which is it's crazy. We've even got a master manual that has every Carter carburetor that's ever been built up to probably 1960, with part numbers, specific adjustment instructions, rebuild instructions, and everything. And it's like a binder that's about 12 inches thick. So when you bought the Sardini, they gave you that clock. Too. Yeah, that's kind of what the, the guy when we when we got ready to we were at the swap meet in Chickasha and the guy at in Chickasha had this clock and he had some Volkswagen parts and we just we kind of talked about it and we couldn't make a deal on the parts he had there. But he said, you know, I think I've got he said, I've got something you might be interested in. He said, I've got a, I've got a Formula V race car. And I was like, oh, OK. He brings me this clock out. Well, there's the in, there's the best handling V 1963, 64, 65, only 10 built. Sardini Formula V, Don Paraboom, designer and builder. And then there's the first Pro D race, North America's highest altitude course, Aspen Raceways, June 23rd, 1965. They won that race. This car was a form car. It hadn't been built, but just a very short time. And from what I understand, the history on that is is Don wanted to poke all the other guys in the eye that he could build a, a cheaper, less expensive car that somebody could take to the track and start racing. And he basically did, he really did. So one of these days, maybe, hopefully, I'll get that car built and can actually take it to some shows too. So, but yeah, that's kind of the, that's kind of the, kind of long and short of it. I've got lots of cool stuff here and, the Rat Fink. Well, the Rat Fink's another unique story as well, too. I had, I, I get on eBay and I bid on stuff and I do stuff. And this thing happened to be on eBay and it was, it was in a, it was in a uh, eBay auction. And it actually came from a place down in Texas that had went out of business. And I think a bank had come in and liquidated some of the stuff so they were auctioned it off. Well, I ended up being the high bidder on this, this statue and i think i ended up giving like 300 dollars for it well nobody really wanted to bid on it because they were going to charge like 400 to crate it so they didn't want to give me money for it it's going to cost too much to crate it and i guess nobody really wanted to go down and pick it up so long story short i went ahead and i bid on it and got it and let them charge me to crate it and they shipped it in 
And I, of course, went around and hauled car shows in the back of my 63 single cab, quite a few different car shows. And I happened to post a picture of it on the Rat Fink Collectors page on Facebook. And it wasn't 10 minutes, a guy private messaged me and he said, I need you to take some measurements and this and that. And he's talking about all this stuff. And I said, okay, no problem. And he said, are you sitting down? And I thought, it's stolen. <laughs> I mean, I just, I didn't know. I said, maybe it's stolen. He said, no, no. He said, um, uh, Ed Roth, which is Rat Fink's creator, he had like six of these commission made to mimic what he had designed. And he said, there's two of them still in existence. He built six, had six of them commissioned and made. He had two of them that's still in existence and they're in his museum in Utah. And he said, I think you got a third one. So he said, what have you been doing with it? I said, I've been hauling around. He said, oh, no, no, don't haul it around. You better leave it sitting. Don't ever. So I've never taken it out of the shop since then. And it sits here and he kind of, kind of keeps guard over this collection of madness. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. It's really pretty cool. And of course, Shin's been here before and we always sit and we, we go through these magazines. I've got so many of these. These are from, I think, the late 50s uh, or early 50s, late 40s, early 50s. And these are popping mechanics, uh, you know, just just gobs of this stuff. I love this kind of old stuff. I'm kind of an old school. I kind of like that stuff. I've always been kind of kind of an old old school guy. I like that kind of stuff. But and of course, collections on top of collections of Hot VW's magazines. I've got some old ones from the '80s over there that I had a real good friend of mine give me complete years of magazines as well. So kind of neat, kind of neat stuff. We've really enjoyed it. Been, it's been fun. It's been fun.